A few things when we're talking about taping relative to the pregnant patient. One thing that I like to do is posturally watch how the mom is actually carrying the fetus. Depending upon how far along she is with pregnancy, we may be looking at a few things anatomically. Now, our model here is perfectly anatomically round. Not always do we see that with the abdomen of a pregnant patient. Depending upon if baby is transverse or vertex, or even if we start to see that they are not transverse or vertex in their breech, we may actually see a different presentation of the abdomen. So that's the very first thing that we're looking for. So posturally, we wanna see how mom is carrying baby where she's reporting a lot of her weight. Now, one of the big things about taping the pregnant patient is we're going to be looking at that pubic symphysis because a lot of times moms will say that their pain is associated with pressure along that pubic symphysis, and so they're looking for remedies to take some of that pain off. The other location that a lot of times we look at is the posterior aspect, looking at the SI joint, looking at the sacrum, looking at some of the different components relative to pain posteriorly. So on the mom on the anterior aspect, first thing we're going to do on my anatomical model is find that pubic symphysis. And usually what I will do is I will have the mom locate the pubic symphysis. I will tell her, find that bony shelf underneath your abdomen, go ahead and place your hands there for me. And again, if this was truly a patient that had shorts or pants or something of that nature on, when I get ready to tape them, I actually have mom place her hand down and push the tape down onto the pubic symphysis so that I'm not entering into an area that they may be uncomfortable with and not placing myself in any sort of risk. So as we get started to go, um, traditionally I will lay the patient down and have them take some pressure off of the pubic symphysis as they lay down posteriorly. And as we get ready to do this, I guess we should lay our model down. Thank you. As we get ready to do this, I'm going to place two strips along the lateral aspect. Now, one of the big things that, again, we're looking for is after posturally we've assessed our patient, when we lay the patient down posteriorly, looking at the location of the round ligament or the broad ligament. Again, this is usually very pronounced in our pregnant patients. So what will happen is, once we get ready to tape, let's say our pubic symphysis is here, we're going to start at that pubic symphysis and we're going to come around the lateral aspect. With the pregnant patients, traditionally, I start off with no tape tension. Really, it is just to provide them support. So we'll start off with a piece of tape on the lateral aspect. We'll do it on both sides, and then we'll come up the midline to help assist again with some more support for mom. Now, as we get ready to do this, we're going to get started. OK, pretending this is our pubic symphysis. Start with our anchor, not really sure how well this is going to stick, but we're going to try. And as we get ready to tape and lay down, thank you. It doesn't function like a real human. It doesn't stick as well as a real human, but we'll go ahead and pretend Okay, and make sure that we activate the tape. Down. Okay, so that's our first strip. Next strip, we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, I like to lay down to tape tension, making sure that we have um, the component over that pubic symphysis. Again, allowing mom to go ahead and activate the tape for me so that I'm not getting too close to the pubic symphysis at all. The other component that I really watch out for is again, as we're doing this, to make sure that the length is okay. Now, with the pregnant abdomen, sometimes we know that as we lay down the tape and mom is laying superior, this should happen relatively quickly because we don't want mom to be laying on their back because as fetus matures and as mom moves along with pregnancy, we can decrease blood flow to the fetus. So if you're taping and you have mom on the back, we can go ahead and place a pillow or a wedge to prop mom up while you're getting ready to do this. Now also, the next component is I will tell mom that she can easily do this at home. If she wants to have somebody help her with this so she's not feeling like she has to come in and have you do it all the time. Some patients will tell you that's enough. 
that just placing the horseshoe, which is what I like to call it, around the abdomen is more than enough to support their abdomen and that they feel really comfortable with it. I like to add that extra support piece across the midline, especially here in Florida. This works amazing because what do we do a lot of times with our pregnant patients? We get them a trochanteric belt, right, or a pregnancy support belt, but they're hot, they're sweaty. And so a lot of times the patients don't like that aspect for support. So going ahead and giving them the extra support with the tape actually really does help them. So the next piece I'm gonna go ahead and lay down, and again, I will ask mom usually if I've taped them before, if this is enough or if they'd like to strip down the midline, because again, sometimes it's uncomfortable for them to have that extra strip. Other times they really like it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this down. Now remember that the abdomens traditionally might be a little bit larger on the patient. So we may have greater distance between all of the strips that we're lying down. And again, depending upon mom and the relative size, it's going to dictate that for us. So yes, down here at the pubic symphysis, as you can see, I try to overlap as best as I can all three areas to give that pubic symphysis a little extra support. Now, as I get ready to pull the tape off and um, pull the backing off and get ready to, look, to uh, lay down this piece, if I was to give a little bit more than tape tension, this would be the strip that I do so. So as I get ready to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down for mom very nicely and then activate the tape. Last and final strip for this taping mechanism. Same thing, we're gonna go right after that pubic symphysis and I want you to see here we've got one, two, three. Now I'm gonna make sure that I overlie this. So it's almost like a V shape at the end. Sometimes what happens is as we lay this down, we wanna make sure we're not moving further laterally, but that we're stemming again from that pubic symphysis as our direction. So I'm gonna lay this down, place my anchor, lay my final piece of tape. Okay, so there we are with mom's final component for her abdomen. Can we stand her up for our, our guests? Okay, so again, all stemming from that pubic symphysis and giving her that extra support in that area and then making sure that they're all activated and set. Now, one of the components, because this isn't a live patient, which is going to dictate something that's a little bit different, depending upon how mom is carrying baby, like we said before, if baby is vertex, or if they're transverse, this may actually dictate the difference between the way you're actually laying the midline of the tape, okay? Because the separation may be a little bit um, more greater. The other component is if baby's head is right here, Okay, baby hasn't flipped yet. Baby's head is right here. What's happening? Now she's got pressure from ribs. So you actually may be taping over and closer to the, the, the aspect of the intercostal spaces a little bit more so than you would if baby is nice and vertex. Okay, so that's one thing to consider with this. Can we rotate the patient? Is that okay? All right, so now posterior. Other things that we wanna consider with the pregnant patient there's two things. If they're reporting low back pain or SI joint pain, and we're thinking about paraspinal hypertonicity or pain for, for mom, one of the things that we can do is we can tape the low back and we can go over the SI joint and then also tape right along the paraspinal area. The thing about doing that is I like to place mom in deflection and then again, just place the tape to tape tension, not adding any stretch to it. So again, I will place one right along the SI joint and then up the paraspinal section. Again, usually I'll have the patient seated on the edge of the table and just have them forward flex a little bit so that we can go ahead and place the tape. The other option is going to be if they report one side of pain. And traditionally when I say that, if a patient's reporting that they have a right-sided sacroiliac joint pain or lumbosacral pain, thinking about the obliquity of the sacrum thinking about a unilateral sacral restriction. And a lot of times that happens with our pelvic patients that have pelvic obliquity. This can not just be with pregnancy, but we may also see it with our dysmenorrheic patients or patients with endometriosis and some chronicity of pelvic pain. So when we're looking for that unilaterality, one of the components that I like to do is tape an asterisk-like location over the epicenter of pain and just go ahead and, and do the asterisk after adjusting the patient and after treating the patient. 
Now with those chronic pelvic pain patients, I know we're getting away from the pregnancy a little bit, but with the chronic pelvic pain patients, if you're placing that asterisk over the area in which the patient is struggling with pain, one of the things that I really like to do, because Traditionally, they're hypersensitive, right? If they have chronic pelvic pain, their sensitivity level is also really, really high. So I will start off with just placing it to tape tension. As they get accommodated to the tape and we start moving along, I'll start adding more stretch. Now, again, the idea is a lot of times if I add in stretch on a chronic pelvic pain patient, they'll say, I took it off that night. Or I left you and I took it off, it's uncomfortable, I don't like it. So again, thinking ahead of how we're going to sensitize them to what we actually optimally want with them. So again, um, getting back to our pregnant patient, let's go ahead and tape the SI area and go up the paraspinals. So we're envisioning our SI joints. And as we do so, we're gonna go ahead and place the tape along the back side. Now, if a patient tells me that they have more pain on one side relative to the other, what, we, what I tend to do is I will move the tape over a little bit more to activate more of the gluteal muscle. So just depending upon her location of pain. Now, for just doing this for stability, there are some patients I've done it um, have taped before with our pregnant patients that like to go and work out. And as they're getting ready to work out, what I will go ahead and do is before we actually um, send them off to work out, I will tape them for that stability of that pelvis and of the lumbar spine, okay? So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. Okay, again, just to tape tension. Oh, thank you. Okay. And we'll go ahead and place up the paraspinal. Now remember I said I would have this patient in deflection. Again, just to tape tension for support of that spine. Uh, my idea here is that we're just trying to support this patient as best as we possibly can. Okay, I will go over and overlap on the tape with my, with my anchor and then just go ahead and bring it up. Now the same thing is true on the opposite side. Working our way all the way up, sorry. Okay, so that would be one method. Now the final method will be the epicenter over the pain pattern. So if my patient then said to me, okay Chris, I only have pain over the right SI or I have pain only over that right sacrum, then now what I would do is I would use my taping and go ahead and just make that epicenter over the, of the portion. So I'm gonna just take this tape off. Yeah, please. Thank you. And same thing is true here. As I'm getting ready to tape, and we place the tape down, one of the things that I like to focus on is, if the patient can go into flexion, sometimes I will place them into flexion to gap the, gap the joint if I think it's a lumbosacral problem. Um, and sometimes what I will also do is just keep them neutral if I'm not sure if it's lumbosacral or if it's SI. So as I get ready to tape, let's say that the location of pain is right here, I will go ahead and lay down the tape. Now traditionally, I will start off with a transverse taping component and then work my way around just depending. Now, I also like to make sure that I activate the glute. So if I'm looking at a lumbosacral junction component, I wanna make sure that I'm taping over the gluteal region as well. So th to me, that's super important, especially with our pregnant moms, um, not even thinking about piriformis. So we could do the exact same thing looking at the asterisk and going right over the piriformis if somebody is reporting piriformis syndrome or struggling with some of the other components of how they're carrying, okay? So, I had way too much coffee, my hands are all shaky. Okay, so as we get ready to lay down this next anchor, traditionally, again, I'm, remember I'm not going to add any tension, I'm really trying to keep it at tape tension only. Again, this works really well with our dysmenorrheic patients. Also, we can do this with our endometriosis patients. 
on the posterior aspect. And one of the other things that I want to be thinking about as I'm doing this is, again, if the patient's pelvis is super sensitive and they're really struggling with the taping mechanism, thinking about the next time how much tape tension I'm going to go ahead and add. Okay. Okay, so that's really it for our segment.